great to be here. I want to say uh, thank you to Esperanza Peace and Justice for organizing this discussion. Uh, having it here in the library, of course having it free, <laughs> <laughs> and all of us coming together, not necessarily sort of with a, a, a clear kind of, here's the answer to this very complex challenge, but wanting to uh, understand the circumstances we find ourselves in, certainly learning from uh, our academics who remind us of our history and who measure uh, what's going on in our neighborhoods is very important. Uh, I think we need to have more of these kind of conversations, not public hearings, but really dialogues about you know, how we define the problem and what our solutions are. Moving forward, I, I do believe that there is a serious concern that I share, that I heard from the prior speakers about narrowly thinking of how our city grows by just measurements of economic wealth. I think the health of our city is much more complicated than the property values that can be measured in the city of San Antonio. When I think about housing policy, I think we need to put it in this larger context of how do we make San Antonio a great place to raise children for all of us, not just some of us. And many of the concerns that were seen in the newspaper really are, uh, I think, a function of narrowly trying to advance a policy of redevelopment instead of more broadly, how do we bring back life uh, in a neighborhood or, or increase diversity in a given area um, and make sure all types of families have an ability to enjoy a given area, whether it's along the San Antonio River or on the near east side the near north side where Angie lives. Um, and, and so city government is, I'm learning, uh, um, a very, uh, you know, you, you can't just sort of approach this with a three-point agenda. Uh, I, I, I think if um, I have an opportunity to lead uh, at the city level, it's going to be more like a 25-point agenda because so much is already happening in our city. And it can't just be sort of housing as one bullet point, but something much larger like neighborhoods and families. And, um, and I think we have an opportunity to sort of approach this in a different way. You know, what's happening on the east side with the Promised Neighborhood is an opportunity to, to learn how to do, how, how, to, how to work with neighborhoods in a different way. Uh, there, we're seeing various departments of city government sit down with various nonprofits and the community to have a place-based sort of approach to improving the community there. Uh, there are lessons to be learned from that that we need to apply in how we approach other neighborhoods. Uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we're going to learn how to relate to our neighborhoods not as functions of government like public works or streets or schools, but rather holistically, how do we improve the circumstances of this given area so that the children who are living there really do grow to be healthy and educated and prepared for the future. Uh, the city of San Antonio is going through a great change. We're adding around 170,000 new residents to our boundaries every decade. It, it is causing uh, a lot of strain. There are opportunities, but there are great challenges. I think over the next decade, our challenge is going to be, how do we make sure that we are all included in that growth in population and diversification of our economy? And how do we do it in a way that preserves the stuff that really matters to our families, right? 
the, the uh, beauty of living in a neighborhood where there is diversity, the, the beauty of being able to take your kids for a stroll through a park or through or along the river. Um, in too many neighborhoods, kids don't have ready access to those kind of greenways. And, and that's, that's something we need to change. When I think about the measures of success for our society, it really is ultimately how well we raise our children. And our schools are very important, but so is access to the natural beauty of our city. And, and we need to make sure that all kids have, have ready access to that. Um, that's very important to me. Uh, the, the other piece is we live in a city that's highly segregated. And I heard that in a lot of the speakers um, today. Uh, we really need, need to more thoughtfully have this discussion. It's a tough discussion to have, but it's an important one. I know we all benefit when we live in a, a diverse community. You know, I, I grew up, I was a son of an immigrant who became a citizen in high school. My mom uh, was raised in Edgewood community. Uh, one of my first role models was a politician. <laughs> you are mine today. <laughs> I sometimes wonder, what if it was an engineer <laughs> or a doctor? I wouldn't be here in front of you. I'd be in a hospital maybe. Uh, but role models are really important and kids uh, exposing children to different role models in their neighborhoods is, is, is where life happens and where dreams are formed and where new horizons are set. And so having diversity, for me, it, it, when I, in real terms, it means seeing children from all types of backgrounds growing up together, playing together, going to school together, being exposed to you know, different professions because there are lots of different people of different backgrounds living life together. Those are the kind of neighborhoods that I think make San Antonio, will make San Antonio a richer experience for all of us, no matter what your background. And so I hope to continue this conversation with you and, um, and, and be a, a supporter as we take on these challenges. Thank you.